Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jacob Restituto and I'm a musician from Northport, New York. And today we have the absolute pleasure of having Mike Boyd Jr. here on the channel. Mike, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time. I've heard your name come up a thousand times. Uh, so it's really, really? I, yeah, absolutely, man. It's a pleasure to be chatting with you. That's amazing. Yeah, man. <laughs> what type of uh, music do you make? Uh, I would call it like alternative pop. Like it's Love a mix. It. I make what I essentially am just inspired by at the moment, which seems so cliche as a musician to say, but it's like, I don't, it's probably goes into the pop genre, but not like bubblegum pop kind of stuff. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, man. The only reason I even ask is because I know we met in the discord, yeah. which is a great way to meet anybody, but you know, we didn't talk a ton. It was kind of like, I like what you're doing. You like what I'm doing. Let's, let's jump on a real zoom, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So I appreciate you uh, being open to it. So, I've heard, like I said, I've heard your name around a bunch, but for the people that aren't super familiar with you, can you give a little bit of a backstory as to who you are and your involvement in music and everything like that? Yeah, for sure. So I work at an ad agency and within the ad agency um, with Gary V Vayner, Vayner Media, I'm in charge of the music strategy for the whole company and we're a global company. And what goes into that, you know, clients, Budweiser, whoever, um, they have ideas and they want to touch with musicians, music, music videos, you know, so we put Meg Thee Stallion in her first Super Bowl commercial for Saber Hummus a couple years ago. Um, we put on concerts. We put a concert together around the Super Bowl again in Atlanta. YG was the headliner, Lil Keed on the come up. He was the opener and then T Grizzly was right there in the middle. Um more recently, we did the Budweiser NFT drop. So it was a really cool experience. We picked 22 artists and Budweiser had a big hand on it, which I thought was awesome. You know, we presented Budweiser with these artists, you know, told them the details. They checked out the music. They checked out the TikToks, Instagram, everything. And it was always so a collaboration. I wouldn't have been as happy if it was on my side. Here's 22, take it or leave it. And they didn't care. I wouldn't like that. And then also, if they picked the artists completely without our input, I wouldn't have liked that either. So this is actually one of the best brand deals, in my opinion, we've ever done. And I should say partnership because it's long term. Hmm. Um, I personally asked every artist, do you drink beer? Um, you know, that's what I like to do. And then given on those type of answers, I take it to the next level. So you know, if someone likes beer, if someone likes video games, it's like, what's your favorite video game? Um, for this, it was, do you drink beer? What beers do you drink? A few of them said Budweiser right away. <laughs> and then I have to get more serious. You know, someone mm -hmm. might say Corona, which Budweiser owns or whatever. And then I just have to, you know, get to the point at that yeah. point. I'm yeah. like, cool. That's great. You drink Heineken, Budweiser, you know, your favorite or IPAs, whatever. And I just say, look, I have a real opportunity with Budweiser if you want to hear more, if you feel comfortable working with the brand, we'll take it from there. If you don't, yeah. it's okay. You know, I bring brand opportunities and there will be another chance, you know? So that's really the intro. And then we yeah. get to talk and yeah, if someone, if so someone wants really to take it to the next step, we do. So with Vayner, or with the company that you work with, um, I, I, your, your name was the A&R rep and music relations. And I was, I was really intrigued by that, or that's what I, at least it was on, on uh, LinkedIn. And I yeah. was intrigued, but I was like, what is a marketing agency? Like, how is it involved in the music? And that's, you explained it really well. I was like, oh, wow. So if company A wants to have, do something with music, you are that intermediary that will connect the yeah. ad agency to the musician, to that brand, essentially. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is uh, so yeah. fascinating, man. And and how it's actually really cool on your company that you work with that they actually do something like that just because like you could just have anybody any joe schmo be like oh let's pick any random artist but you've been it like work you you know the music industry really well so you know who's popping who's doing really well who's you know would be a good fit who wouldn't be a good fit that's super fascinating actually that's really interesting just to see how the industry works on that aspect hell yeah, yeah. that's really interesting so now kind of going into um what we how how you and I met you and I met through the uh, Budweiser royalty NFT drop. Um, we were both in the Discord. We were chatting, and um, I would love just. I've been super intrigued with the NFT space. Um, 
especially because I just I love you know what's what's hot and what's going on. I I try to be on the you know the cutting edge of so many things, That's and good. it's interesting because so many people um, dismiss it, and it's so interesting. <laughs> like and if yeah. you, you dude, you can't say that word without people being like, oh, it's like when TikTok, it's TikTok still is kind of like this, but you can't say TikTok without people rolling their eyes. You know, and I feel like NFTs is that much more because money is involved and people are, you know, people are spending millions of dollars and it's like people don't get it. And I understand that. Um, so it's really interesting to see how it's now becoming a little bit slowly more mainstream with, you know, the music industry and artists and Budweiser. Some of these big companies are starting to get involved. Um, right. So can you give just a little like two second brief introduction for somebody that's never even heard what an NFT is? And then can, can you talk about how Budweiser got involved uh, with which is the partnership you were referencing earlier, and we'll take it from there. Hell yeah! All right, cool. Well, first of all, right off the bat, when it comes to NFTs and crypto and everything, when it comes to money, you never want to invest more than you could lose. Okay, mm -hmm. it's like going to a casino. You don't put 10k down if you can't afford it, but you know, because the market goes up and down constantly. So one thing that Gary V says, and I work with Gary, so. You know, I got to represent for Gary. Um, part of it is buying things you actually want. You know, if, you, if you're buying something just to make money, that's very risky. Mm. But if you buy something, like if you're really into vapes and they do an NFT drop, the, the clothing brand, or you're really into Budweiser, like that's, you know, you grew up with a neon sign in your kitchen or something. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's like, if you want that, you know, Kevin Durant is your favorite basketball player and he does one. Like, if you want that, buy it, whatever. Yeah. But do not spend more money than you have to lose because that's not cool and that's very mm -hmm. dangerous. And then people get upset and they're like, oh, man, I thought I was going to make a million dollars. And it's like, if everyone was making a million dollars, like, that would be a big deal, too. Like, we would know that. Like, it's not a secret. Like, the Internet's mm -hmm. big. So, you know, it's just like going to a casino. Not everyone walks out with a bunch of money. Like, you mm -hmm. would know that if people were just becoming millionaires overnight at the casino, you would know that it would be public info. So it's yeah. like, obviously this is dangerous. It's a risk. I should say no one's getting hurt, but it's a risk. So, you know, NFTs could be anything you want them to be. And that's the coolest part. I, I see it as like a new word for marketing. You know what I mean? A new word for connecting. It's like this idea of giving back, mm -hmm. connecting, rewarding, selling art, that's been around forever. So I think what the miscommunication is people get mad because they're not doing the real research. They're not educating themselves. And I get it. People get mad sometimes. You know, people people are having a bad day and then they see on the internet, NFT this, NFT that. Yeah. And they're like, man, forget it all. I'm so it's angry. Kind of no different than gambling on a penny stock that you know nothing about. You're just trying to make a quick bag really quick, but very different than if you're like, Oh, I believe in Tesla or Google or like, and I want to invest in that company. Um, but that's really interesting what you said about marketing. And I think that so many people, um, just see it as this whole art aspect and you just buying a pick a JPEG of a monkey or something like that. But, um, something that you, the, the, what you guys are trying to do with, with Budweiser and a lot of people in, in this area right here is try to actually add a lot of value to the, rather than it just be, you know, oh, you just own this, you know, trading card. Well, here's this trading card with blank. And can you kind of explain it to that? Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? For everyone listening, these are my opinions. You know, sure. no one, in my opinion, no one's an expert. It's too mm -hmm. early. And if you feel like you're late, you're wrong. It's still early. Because oh, yeah, everyone's learning. That's you know what I mean? Point. There is no master expert of this thing that's running the game. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. So, you kind of got to, you have to do the research and trust yeah. yourself. You just have to don't, don't follow anyone. Don't do anything blindly. Mm. You know, the, the market's going up, it's going down. You know, there might be to quote young jock, it's going down, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> there might be a moment where it goes all the way down. Yeah. And then if you don't own stuff that you like, like what the heck are you doing? Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like Pokemon. You got to catch them all, man. You got to keep them in your wallet. And then when you go hang out with your friends, you're like, yo, you know what's cool? I have this NFT of what I like. You want to look at it? You want to talk about it? Like, it's cool. It's cool to own things that you're proud of. It's mm -hmm. just cool. But, you know, you were talking about utility. So anyone yeah. who doesn't know, Google the word utility with NFT. You know, just Google NFT utility. And you can research it. But it makes it so 
people who buy those NFTs get something. And a lot of times it's in real life. And that's what I like. I'm personally, I'm really obsessed and fascinated by utility because again, with Gary V, one of his NFTs lets you sit courtside with him at a Knicks game. Mm -hmm. That's a cool experience. Even if you don't like basketball, you get to sit next to a person for, I don't know how long a basketball game, you know, 45 minutes or something. That's cool. And those are the type of NFTs in my opinion, even if everything crashed, they're still worth something. Mm, like that's a you know, great. Getting in, mm, yeah, that's a yeah, great man. question. Because the follow up that I was going to ask is because, say, I as a musician, like I want to, you know, my following isn't massive yet, but I want to create some sort of NFT and make them cheap and essentially be like, if you believe in me, this is your way of like saying, hey, I believe in myself so much that I'll sell this for whatever, say five, ten, fifteen bucks, thirty bucks, what I don't know, it's cheap, so that they could yeah. acquire them, right? And if you believe in my career, hold on to this. And it, my goal is to it, to be worth something one day. But my question to you is like, if a musician did that and the whole market goes down, how would you um, how would you continue to add the value even when the market as a whole is down? But by utility, because hanging out with me or Gary or somebody is still worth something, whether or not that token's worth ten thousand or five hundred or five dollars. That's super fascinating. That's really interesting. Hell yo, thanks, man. Because I think, yeah, that's the thing. A lot of people don't, a lot of people just don't know what's going on and I don't yeah. blame them. Sure. And you know what? A lot of people are angry. I don't blame them either. I feel like everyone's emotions are valid. It's just yeah. kind of, you got to get to the thought process behind them, right? Yeah. It's like, if you're mad, let's talk about it. Otherwise, like, I can't really reply. I can't help at all. Because if you're mad and you don't tell us what you're thinking, then like, we're not talking. And if you're happy and you don't tell us what you're thinking, like, what the heck? Like, if we don't want to have a conversation, why are you even telling us you're mad? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah, It's okay to go on the internet and yell and scream, whatever. <laughs> but, like, I can't help you if you don't give me the context. But How do yeah, you man. see musicians utilizing uh, NFTs in the future? Well, I like think... Like, if you just some real-world example, if the top of your head, what, what, what could you see them, like, utilize? Like, um, utility, I guess. If you were yeah. just, like never heard of this before and be like oh you could do this or this or this you know because my goal with these chats is like there was no information for me coming up like you know now that i ha i've made it somewhere it's where it's my full-time career my goal is for the artist that's like wants to take that leap but has no idea where to start that they could like take little snippets from it and be like oh i could try that or i could try that or that's a cool idea maybe one day i'll do that you know so they have they they have heard of nfts they're considering it what are some utilities that you think that they could apply in the future or the industry as a whole yeah, I love that question. Um, I mean, to be real, I don't see, well, I answer it twice. So people are figuring out how to do royalties, streaming money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But in my opinion, it's still super early on that. And so mm -hmm. I still focus on utility. You know, I don't, mm -hmm. I personally just, you know, I'm not in the weeds understanding that. I know Nas just did it. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy for them. And it's amazing. But it's like, for me, I do utility. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's like, I don't know how big of a difference it makes no matter what industry you're in. It's like, to me, the most important thing is to listen to the people who care about you and then give them what they want. So it's wow. like, yeah, it's like if you're if you're a musician and people like lyrics, maybe... Mm -hmm. I don't know, do whatever you need to do, you know, give them a virtual look at you while you're in the studio writing them. If you're in Nashville and like, you're like, Hey, who owns my NFT? And you're in Nashville, uh, show your wallet, show your MetaMask wallet at the door, prove it. And, you know, you get to sit in on the session, obviously, you know, you got to consider you, maybe you need a security guard. Maybe you need something because you just really kind of don't know who's going to show up, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, there's a yeah. lot of stuff like that. Yeah. And then, you know, or you like, airdrop them an NFT of your lyric sheet, you know, a signed lyric sheet or something like you could just you could do so much with it. It's so fascinating. Man, man, and see what you just said is amazing. Like any there's you could really do anything. But the mm -hmm. most important thing is you have to have a vision and a plan, right? Because you bring that vision and that plan to the smart contract. And then the people who make the smart contract who are, in my opinion, one of the most important part, um, they put your plan into the contract, which is virtual. It's just like, again, this is nothing new to me. It's like when you're an artist, you sign contracts. Now it's a virtual contract that lives forever. 
So if you tell the smart contract person, hey, I want the drop to be 404 to start because I'm from Atlanta. That's our area code. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I'm going to add 10K more tokens later. You just got to tell the smart contract person. They'll build it in for you. So can that – this is a personal question because I've been trying to figure this out because – Obviously, you mentioned that the the industry is constantly changing, and it's so still so early. Say I do my own NFT, right? And I say, you know, like I don't know how many people I could pull at a concert. So for me to be like, you know, oh, we'll do a meet and greet at a concert. It might not be worth it for the the, the supporters yet, right? But like one day when that's the case, is it, is are you able to edit that contract so that that's part of the contract or can you like add it to the smart contract later so that the, anybody you know what i mean like how does that work like where you want to add say you want to add value later on you know and they're like you want to just say oh you get royalties or you do this or that can you adjust that smart contract or add to that smart contract so it's a part of it later in the in the owner's nft life well i mean that's a great question and like I said, no one's a, well. No one, I no one's an expert, yeah, but yeah. that's a question for a smart contract developer. Sure, okay, and yeah. I have them on speed dial, so if you want me to find out, I'll find out for you. Because yeah. I, I, I want to know that too. <laughs> for but sure. like I said, it's early days, mm -hmm. and yo, like even with you, you said people might not even be able to do a meet and greet yet, or if they did, it wouldn't be too hard to do. So, like I was saying, everyone just needs to listen to the people. Yeah who are talking to them. Like if I did an NFT myself, I know some people on TikTok enjoy certain type of videos. I know some people want my opinion on their music. Mm. You know what I mean? Like I just, I could only give people what they want. Like I always say, one thing I always say, it's like selling anything. Yeah. Right. You can sell books, you can sell calculators, you can sell lemonade, but the only people are going to buy it if they want it. You know what I mean? Like, and that, that's a hard reality, but you know, when people open a business, a brick and mortar store, and if they're not doing well, it's like, well, are you Nobody selling what people want? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if, if you're not giving people what they want, like that's reality. Yeah, like Gary sure. says, the market decides. So if I'm selling Pokemon cards and then they go out of style, it's like, you know, beanie babies. It's like once people don't want them, if you're not adapting and reacting, mm -hmm. like, it's no one, no one's taking it personal. No one's like, Oh, I don't want to buy that person's stuff. Cause I don't like them. It's like, just think about money, man. Like people have to pay bills. They got to eat. They want to travel sometimes. Maybe they want to pay for meditation apps. And it's like, when you walk down the street and you see someone selling lemonade, you'll buy it if you're mm -hmm. thirsty mm -hmm. or maybe you don't care about the sugar or whatever, but you know what I'm saying? So it's like, when you Absolutely. sell an NFT, no one owes you money. Like even your mom and your cousins, they don't <laughs> owe you money. But if you give them what they want, if you're like, hey, mom, we never get to talk. But if you buy my NFT, I'll FaceTime you every day. Maybe <laughs> she wants to buy that. You know what I'm sure. saying? <laughs> sure. Uh, it'd be an interesting parental son dynamic, but sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny. I'm curious now to segue a little bit into um, your job as an A&R rep in the company. Um, I would lo just love to know your opinion on music in general and like where... Uh, what do you, when you're looking at artists and stuff, what do you see, like, what makes you look at an artist be like, that they stand out as an artist, they stand out as an artist. And again, with the mind that, you know, artists watch this, that, you know, are trying to make their career kind of thing. Like, what, what what's something that, like, you would look for in an artist? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's the question everyone's trying to figure out. You know, <laughs> you're a musician, not just me, but I'm just saying, like, everyone's like, what should I be doing right? And I'd say it's a lot of things all at once but most important for me is the music for real i listen to a lot of music even when people spam me like i said i don't care like someone might be going through a rough day someone might just be like i want to spam this person i check out a lot of spam music or music that's spamming me on comments and i love it hmm. i mean some music's bad to me <laughs> it's a, you know it's an opinion sure and when I say bad, it just means they're not ready for my support, you know? Mm. And, you know, it's like if Kendrick Lamar was sending you music when he was 12, you might be like, well, I'm not ready to support it. But, you you know, anything could change. That's so that's so why true. I also, yeah, I also tell people just keep giving me links because the Spotify playlist that I run with Gary Vee, 
we have 83,000 followers on Spotify alone. And like, there's a purpose, there's a mission behind it. So, you know, people give me music all the time and I'm like, I'm not trying to discourage you. It's just, maybe you didn't make the playlist. Maybe we didn't even hear it yet. Like just keep giving us music. It's Mm. not, it's like what I said earlier, no one owes anything any to anyone, but I'm listening. Sure. I tell people, it's like, I need your music as much as you want to be on the playlist. Like if, without mm. your music, I wouldn't even have a good playlist. So I'm listening. Yeah. And then get this. I've been meeting cool people on Instagram. Um, Satoma, she's a great artist. She plays a lot of instruments, really good at TikTok. Um, but she's very much starting out. And she's so talented. I met her on TikTok. Um, I put her in the Budweiser mm-hmm. NFT drop. I really believe in her. And here's the thing that I do. Um, we support Vayner Media, myself, Gary. We support people that are talented, people we think deserve a little bit more shine, a little bit more exposure, whether they're going to make it or not. Mm. And oh, I think as long as you do that, you're good. Because at the end of the day, if I'm like, yo, everyone check out this person, it's like, I'm not lying. Like, I'm, just because I say someone's cool doesn't mean they're going to become internationally famous. And I wow. think musicians, yeah, they need to rethink their goals too. Cause sometimes mm. a musician tells me, Hey, I'm doing shows in my city. And they're like, or no, they tell me, Hey, I need to be bigger. I'm not happy. And then I have to tell them you're doing headlining shows in your city or in your region. I'm like, you got to just be a little bit more grateful because a lot of people never get that far. Sure. Yeah you kind of are winning. And if that was your goal, you already won, you know, because how many people are international superstars anyway, Mm -hmm. like Ariana Grande and stuff. How many people even get to that level? (laughs) I think you need to, I don't know. You need to be grateful for what you have, man. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so true, man. It's so fascinating. And I'm curious though, in, in all these conversations that you've had and what you've, the people you've met, how much would you say for the people that, quote unquote, make it even to where that whatever that level they want to make it to, right? Like some some people want to just headline their region, some people want to headline the US, whatever the case is. How much of it do you think is drive versus talent versus, you know, the people you know, I'm I'm, because we put so much uh, emphasis on talent. And then you look at this person, you're like, well, this guy playing at this bar over here is way more talented than this guy. But he has four mm-hmm. people and he has 400,000 people. You know what I mean? So I'm curious if, if that stands true in your perspective or if that's not the case in your perspective. Well, you know what, man? It all goes, it actually goes back to what we were talking about with giving people what they want. You know, it's like, hmm. I could be the wow. smartest person in the world, read every book and then write my own book. And people are like, well, I don't like that topic. It's like, you know, it's nothing personal. It's just, I'd rather listen to this person than you. And, if wow, a lot of people really feel that way, yeah, if a lot of yeah. people feel that way and they're demanding the artists in their city, like what's the booking agent supposed to do? <laughs> you know, they're just yeah. going to be like, well, well, dang, like you're on tour now. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I think people just need to be, people need, need to be more self-aware. It's like you could, <sighs> and that might be their, their goal. It's like, if you're the best country music artist in the world, you should be happy. I mean, maybe you're not doing what needs to be done to be on tour, but if that's not your goal, like you did it and congratulations, you know? Yeah. That's super interesting about what you said about giving the people what they want, because like you look at somebody like Bob Dylan, who like people like hated his voice, but he's still like a massive international superstar because he gave the people what they wanted, which was his songwriting and his, the reality of the the state of the world at the moment, all that stuff. Like he gave people anthems and he wasn't the best singer. You know what I mean? He wasn't the most talented singer in the eyes of like, you know, a vocal coach but he gave the people what they wanted. They didn't want a great singer. They just wanted Bob Dylan. That's such an interesting perspective, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Like right place, right time. Yeah. And you know, sometimes when you have the big marketing, the big record label, they put you in the right place at the right time. Sure. Everyone's, and that's a business. People need to remember it's a business. Everything's yeah. a business. So, and also music's subjective, you know? So someone might be like, I don't like that music, but it's like, then don't listen to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just, you know, if you, if your goal, you have, everyone has to think about their goals. If your goal is just to make a certain type of music, then do it. But if your goal is also to make the music and then reach people, meet your fans. Like I used to manage artists and, um, before we ever got booked for shows, we'd figure out where our fans were and we would drive from Atlanta to Kentucky and we Mm -hmm. would 
contact a local clothing store, pull up, they'd play the music and we'd tell everyone, all we needed was a location. We'd mm-hmm. say, Hey, if you're in the city, we're here from five to eight, the store is giving you a 10% discount for foot wow. traffic. You know what I mean? And we just want to connect. And then we got everyone's phone numbers, emails, stayed in contact. And then, you know what? It's like, um, like I always say, photos are more important than autographs. You know, who gets autographs anymore? <laughs> so, and I mean, autographs are kind of cool because I guess they're rare. But, you know, it's like you take a, you go to a city, take a photo. That person's going to show their mom, their cousins, their coworkers. And then everyone's going to be like, well, who is that? You know, they're mm-hmm. going to post it on Instagram and be like, dang, I can't believe I met my favorite emerging artist. And then everyone in the comments is going to be like, who is that? Or, you know, you go hang out with your friends at a dinner party and they're like, yo, I saw you posted this photo. I checked out the person's music. They are cool. You know, it's, mm. it's just giving people, it's giving, they call it giving people social currency. That's sure. what people want to use in dinner combos and stuff. So <laughs> it goes a long way, man, like touching the Ooh. people. And then eventually we did get booked, but, yeah. and you know what else is crazy? When we got booked, we gave those early people free tickets because we're like, Hey, you've been down with us since the start, you know? So now we're back to reward you for real. So, so I think the problem with so many artists, not the problem, but like we're all trying to get social currency, but you just said you give out the social currency to these, to your supporters. Like we're all trying to get the clout and trying to get the followers and trying to get the streams so that we have the social clout and social currency. But when you give it to your followers, you know, like you show up to their city and give them the, the, what something that they can talk about. You know, it, it comes back around to you. That is really interesting. Huh. That's a cool perspective. Yeah, man. It all goes back to giving people what they want. Yeah. Because also it's like if you're a new artist and you get playlisted on my playlist, which I think is actually pretty good, actually, in that situation. But, you know, you get on one of these big rap caviar, or whatever the genre, big time playlist. It's like. I don't know. It's like what I see sometimes is these playlists will pump up a song and they might pick the song. It's a lot of exposure, but then someone like me, I listen to the music and I even tell these artists sometimes I'm like, Hey, actually that song with way less views, that's your best song. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind because this one has millions of views because it got pumped up by a playlist, but you need to actually keep pushing this one because this is who you are. So yeah. sometimes getting playlists is actually horrible. That's really um, interesting. Yeah, it's like you got to you got to pay attention. Yeah, you have to I think the most important thing you can do is listen. Obviously, you have to be on the offense a lot cuz that's how things get done, but you have to listen, man, and you got to react to what's going on. Yeah. Like you can't be in your own world. You can't be emerging artists and be like at least I don't like it. It's possible, but I don't like it when emerging artists are acting like they're superstars. You know, like you <laughs> yeah. have to be realistic. Yeah, no, it's absolutely right. I want to be respectful of your time. So I want to um, follow up with that one last thing you mentioned. So with the whole sp- aspect of um, say somebody got it playlisted, right? And they're on a playlist yeah. now. They have all or they, they go viral on TikTok, right? They get all this. They go from really nothing to all this tremendous exposure, right? How do you recommend uh, that an artist from that like actually continues to build that into a career. Like if you could give some tips on that, cause it's so easy, quote unquote easy at this point to get the exposure, but then to maintain that. Like I look at somebody like Ty Veritas, who I know you guys, uh, that's my guy. Yeah. I know like that guy is, I, I found, I saw his first viral TikTok. I've been following him since his first viral TikTok. So to watch his career, I'm like, at first I was like, man, this guy, this guy's cool. Like I was like, as a musician, I was like, honestly jealous. I'm like, shoot this guy. But now I'm like inspired because like in a year and a half, he literally went from working at the Verizon store to the Macy's day parade. Like the guy like turned it into a career. I'm like, that's so inspiring now, you know, like how fast things can happen. So he turned it into a career, but then so many other people don't, they, they have their five minutes of fame and then that's it. You never hear them again. So I'm curious, like what, what's the difference between the two or can you give tips to be the tie instead of the 15 minutes of fame person? Yeah. Well, yeah, a bunch of things were going on there. So I actually went to college with his manager. So <laughs> The world is so yeah. small, man. <laughs> I know. And we used to work at the front desk of the oh, school. Oh, that's so funny. I worked at the front desk. He worked across the hall in a different department, but yeah. So I knew him for a long time and 
we knew each other. So he hit me up and he's like, Hey, I got this new artist you want to support. And, you know, so I listened to the music mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah, this guy's great. So I put him on the playlist mm-hmm. as probably the first person to ever playlist them. Cause it was that early. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, what's funny about him is he loves Gary's content. So mm-hmm. we always say post, 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 post. So I think he posted like 82 times or something. And then he finally got his moment. But, you know, that's how it works. You just got to keep posting, be consistent. And we did it. And I set up an interview with him and Gary, Mm -hmm. which was virtual and streamed. And then he put it on his own YouTube. So it's still there if anyone wants to watch it. But he tells Gary, like, you know, I did this because of your your stuff. And I actually saw him in concert and he showed us his phone. He listens to Gary's talks before he goes on stage. And in his Apple iTunes, it's just two tracks. One is Gary talking and one's Will Smith talking. So he wasn't even lying. I was like, mm-hmm. what? And then he showed us his phone. I was like, whoa. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think the most important thing is when you have your moment, I mean, hopefully it's not a just a random moment. You know, he posted 80 something times, so he didn't really have a random moment. He made it happen. Yeah. But also it all goes back to listening because I, you know what I could say? People don't own fans. They rent them. You know, it's like they're here for a little bit. You got to realize that because, you know, a lot of fans are young and they love, they love the music they're following. But then when you take three years to do your next album, they might not still be following you Mm -hmm. because you don't own them. So, and then if you're not listening and paying attention and giving people what they want, why would they stick around? You know, Mm -hmm. it's like in the average Mm -hmm. day, you don't really have a ton of time to listen to just anybody. And then you're competing against all music ever from all time. You know, someone might be like, oh, you're a good artist, but I actually listen to the Beatles and they're better than you. So whatever. You know what I mean? So it's like if you're not giving people a reason, then why would they listen? You know, Um, and I like I like new artists because they have a lot of passion and I could hear it in their voices. I could see it in their eyes. So that's what I personally like. That's just me. Sure. But when an artist, some of these artists even tell me they're like, oh, you know, that song, I didn't have the right mix master and i'm like i don't care Mm -hmm. like also when it comes with people like gucci main it's like that's why he blew up because it was raw Mm -hmm. you know what i mean it's like you just gotta Mm -hmm. represent what you have you don't yeah like i don't i don't even care like i don't care at all like just give me what you have as long as you're saying it from the heart i I could hear that Mm -hmm. you know so last question for you this is a perfect follow-up from that gucci main comment would you rather and you this is complete personal opinion based on your personal opinion or what you've seen would you rather an artist put out six really developed tracks a year or 52 somewhat developed tracks a year? Um, or does it depend on the artist? I guess. Well, yeah, the, I mean, the... everything depends on the artist. But I would say something cool is when you put out a project and it tells your story, but also you're the star of your own little world because um because you know i can't tell people how many songs to drop but what i will say is when these emerging artists do a mixtape or an album and i'm mostly talking about hip-hop pop hip-hop alternative rap but it could be any genre but when you do a a, but i said mixtape but you know what i'm saying (laughs) when you do a project ep whatever and you get drake on it Wiz khalifa like someone big casey musgraves if you're not doing the rap thing you know if you get dually but if you get someone big it's like i don't like that some people might but oh interesting wow it takes away from everything like oh because then they become the star instead of you being the star wow and people are listening because of drake instead of because of you wow that's really and you're renting drake's fans instead of creating your own fans wow that is super interesting man and that's so many artists are trying to get that that collab to wow that's really interesting yeah it's a waste of money to me because see some people put out a tape project ep and they have their friends on it Mm -hmm. or they have ad libs or it's like i want to hear from you Mm -hmm. and if anyone else is on this i want to hear someone who knows you you know what i mean it's like that you're still the star but maybe your cousin could sing or your mom could sing it's like I want every piece of this to go back to you Mm because when you have Wiz Khalifa, I'm not trying to name too many names, but he's famous. So 
when you have some famous person do a do a track a verse and they never even met you it's like like what the hell like mm-hmm. i don't want to hear that you know mm-hmm. it's like if if it's future and young thug who are like best friends i want to i do want to hear that because it's mm-hmm. all i could hear it in your voice i could mm-hmm. really hear it in your soul i could hear it in your heart and i could tell when it's not real and that's mm-hmm. just that's just the truth so you know it's like you got to put on your people but also you have to be the star and when you yeah. when you pull in all from all these angles you know that's why sometimes people work with the same producer it's because mm-hmm. that's real it's just like i could work with bad bunny's producer but the producer i've been working with wow. from the start i mean they know me so mm-hmm. if we're gonna make hits we got to keep it going it's mm-hmm. like but you're, everyone's open like you're open to stuff for sure but it has to connect because the people hear that everyone could hear it you know like yeah. really you could hear it yeah that is super fascinating i think that that so many people that are going to hear that are going to find that really interesting but um, I really appreciate your time, man. If you could just hang out for 30 more seconds, I want to say thank you to every single person that watched this and listened to this. You guys are the true ones making it to the end of this podcast or video, depending on Hell how you're yeah. watching. Yo, I got one more thing to say, bro. Yeah, please. Real quick. When you're trying to find a new artist, one thing I have to say is, yeah, you listen to the music. You look at how they're moving. You look at the team behind them. You look at all that. But one thing to keep in mind is... um take everyone's opinion and try to figure out why they're saying it. So if you hear a bunch of people in a certain city talking about the artists from that city, you got to recognize that they might be too close to the music to see I'm from St. Louis and I'm in New York and all this stuff. But, and I lived in Atlanta for a little bit, but see, I have a different perspective because I've been in these different States. And what I mean by that is you might be the hottest person in your city But if the Midwest, the West Coast, New York, you know, Argentina, like whatever, if they don't feel it, maybe you're not ready yet. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is like someone might be like, yo, my neighbor, the hottest guy from my town, check him out. And I'm not trying to hate on anybody because I'll be like, yeah, I'll listen. But I got to keep in mind, I'm like, hey, you're hearing it different than me. Mm -hmm. And if you're hearing it different than me, I just have to take it into account because if you're not if you're not making the type of like Fresco Trey, he makes hits. And I told him to his face a couple of times. And then Gary said the same thing randomly, but we both told him on different occasions, the music you make, I could play it for anyone. Mm. And that's so mm. rare. Mm-hmm. I could play it for a mom. I could play it, play it for a kid. I could play it for people who hate music and everyone's going to like it, or at mm-hmm. least they'll recognize something in it. But then, you know, I know key Glock, And that's one of my favorite guys and he's from Memphis and maybe not everyone would like his music and that's Mm -hmm. okay. Cause he Mm -hmm. still made it. But when you, you just have Mm -hmm. to take into consideration how different people are going to hear different songs, you know, that is a big part of it. Yeah. No, that's really interesting. And, and yeah, it's so many different factors, man. It's, it's so fascinating as an artist, you know, and as all these artists like, Oh, what can I do to, you know, gain traction and all this stuff. It's just, the answer is different for everybody and different people are at different places at different times. And it's just so, such a fascinating uh, journey, I guess you'll call it. Right. Hell yeah. And yo, one last thing I got to say, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Keep it coming. Um, I just, I don't, I didn't want to take you too long. Cause I know you said you had another meeting. So, but yeah, whatever you want to share, <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, I just have too much it. fun. I have too much fun <laughs> talking. Yo. Um, all right. This is the last thing I got to say. Sure. Someone told me one time, they said, Hey, if, if you meet someone and they're going hard for an artist, you better pay attention. And I think that's really cool because it's like, again, it's like the playlist, that playlist that me and Gary do, that's not my personal opinion. Like, that's not like, Hey, I run a playlist. So if I don't like you, you're not on it. That's not the case. And I understand some people might not, not, might not know that or might've never even thought of that, but there's a purpose for the playlist. And see, if, if I didn't like a song, but everyone was going hard for it and coming Mm. from an authentic place. I have to recognize it Mm -hmm. and I have to flag it to Gary and I have to flag it to everyone. I'm like, Hey, look, I'm not saying anybody, I'm not, it's like, Hey, look, I'm not saying you're going to like this, but this is happening. Mm -hmm. So pay attention. Everyone. That kind of almost takes out, I mean, there's that quote, uh, quality is subjective, right? So what you, what I think is quality, you might not think is quality. What you think is quality. This person might not think is quality. And it's almost removing that 
subjectivity out of it and say my opinion doesn't matter of this but if 98 percent of the you know chicago and you know memphis and they're all saying that this artist popping off i should listen to that or consider it even if it's not my taste or i'm not you know that's really interesting and that's probably i would say one of the bigger factors as to um in my personal opinion in the 30 minutes we've been talking that has to be a big factor as to why you know you had the success because you're able to remove your opinion and able to hear what people are actually interested in that's really interesting that i think is can be a really uh a game changer for a lot of people that's really that's fascinating yeah that's real and then to tie it back to what i was saying earlier it's like I, i've been saying a lot of the same things on this podcast because they're important sure but the other man the last thing is yeah the flip side of everyone talking about something there was this artist and i'm not going to name any names right but there was this artist and this big dj influencer person who's still in the game still working with some of the biggest artists in the world they were talking about this artist as being the hottest artist in their city. So I paid attention because like I just said, if, if people are going hard, you got to look into it. But I kept listening and it was not a city I was living in. And I just kept listening to it. I mean, sometimes this is a while ago. I used to listen to songs like hundreds of times because I was like, what is going on here? And sometimes on like the hundredth listen, I'd be like, oh my God, I mm. get it. I heard it. I understand what's going on. But sometimes, I mean, I was listening to this song and I was like, I don't get it. And that's okay, but I did not get it. So I, I called the guy because I do know a lot of people because I've been in the game so long and I never screw people over. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a small industry. Some people might be managing this person and then 10 years later, now yeah. they're managing this person. So They're working across the hall from you at your college. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's yeah, real. It's, it's true. So I called, I called this big guy in the city, this important person. And I said, Hey, is that really the hottest artist in the city? I was like, I just can't hear it. I go, but I'm not there. I was like, is that real? And they told me, they said, no, the record label paid them to say that. Wow. That's interesting. Hmm. That kind of, yeah, that kind of broke my heart, man. Hmm. But it was a long time ago, but, uh, that's that's like the combination of everything. It's like, yeah. listen, pay attention, make your own decisions, but pay attention to people who are really going hard for something. But don't forget, you got to try and figure out why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of reasons why people say things and they might not be very clear. So like, it's just a combination, man. You got to take a risk. You got to trust your heart. But there's so much that goes into it. And luckily, I have a great track record. And I bring that to Gary too, but you know, no one's perfect. So everyone has to take their own route. And I do believe if you keep going, I think everyone kind of gets a shot and it comes in a different way hmm. for everyone at a different time. But if you don't give up, but mm -hmm. you got to keep it realistic, what your goal is. Like mm -hmm. not everyone gets a shot to be an international superstar. That's weird. Like there's not even that many. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? Figure it out. Yeah. No, it's, you dropped so many gems, man. I think this is going to be such a great episode for everybody to hear. So thank you so much. All for the people watching and listening, All the, your, your social media link will be down below if people want to follow you. Um, thank you, guys. Definitely go check out his stuff. If you best way to support this channel is checking out my own original music. Download the new Jacob Restituto app, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, Mike. Or Mike, thank you for coming. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Peace out.